The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 18th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. And I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means send me an email, send it early, and send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that we track are trading the upside. The one that is uh, wavering here is the semis. They're only up four points, so basically flat. Dow's up 343 or 1%. The S&P 38, 1%. NASDAQ about three quarters of a percent or 87 points. Russell's up one and a half. Gold's off seven bucks. Silver's down six pennies. Lights we crude is up 287. Natural gas down 10 cents. And a 30 year treasury is basically flat at 123.09. Leading the charge to the upside dollar wise, it's service now. Up, uh, well, it's actually Goldman Sachs up 11 bucks or 3.5%, followed by ServiceNow up nearly 10 bucks or 3%. Lamb Research up about 5. Costco is up about 10. Bill.com Holdings is up about 5%. Man, my screens are screwed up. I'll have to change that during the break out there. I was going to say, leading the charge to the downside, although I'm kind of suspect about this, would be Silvergate Capital off 14 bucks or 20%. So we'll come back to those. But let's go take a look at, hey, what's going on inside the market as we speak right now, Stevie? So let's go switch over and take a look at the start, take a look at the ES mini. And we'll do a thorough review of this. We'll start by taking a look at the daily and then its other intraday time periods out here. So let's start from bottom right and move over. So we'll go from the shorter term time frame because then we can say, okay, here's what's going on and what's that going to lead to. So there was a TD9 count pattern that had formed. Uh, that completed at uh, 10.50 this morning. Now, that low, the key threshold level of that low is 37.32. We're trading below it right now. We've got uh, one minute, less than one minute left in this session. So a close below 37.32 says we had lower. Now, on a 10-minute chart, that next lower level will be 37.12.75 out there. However, the, we do see that's a TD9 count breakout area. But we do see some potential support at around 37 and a uh, – uh, what's that about 37 uh, well i'll tell you what exactly what it is 37 23 uh here if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame chart now both of these the 10 minute the 15 minute quite frankly the 30 minute quite frankly the 60 minute they each have rose momentum indicator tops so that's when uh, price uh, stretches itself uh with less relative uh, strength out there and it's confirmed with uh with a bearish reversal candle. And that's exactly on a 15-minute chart we have. So it's targeting. There's no bottom signal just yet, but it is targeting its breakout level of 37.26.25. That is the next key area of support for the ES Mini. If price closes below that, it says we head lower. We looked at the 30-minute chart right now. Price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. So there's no other support out here from a profile standpoint. The next level of support would be its breakout area at 36.48.75. I am not saying that's where price is headed to. You got too many other uh, areas to be watching first before that 
uh, comes to fruition. However, if price does get below the low of its pattern, which was about 6 o'clock this morning on a retracement, and again, that is at the 37.23 area, if price does get below that, that certainly suggests lower price. 60-minute time frame. 60-minute time frame has a Rochemont indicator top. Price right now is dealing with support at 37.28. A close below 37.28 is going to suggest lower price. Now, 36.10 would be the next area that I would point to, but I'm not saying that's where price is headed inside the ES Mini. That is its TD9 count breakout area. To the 120-minute time frame chart, it has formed a TD9 count top. Price right now is trading below its oscillator and change line. That is suggesting that for that time frame, and if this is just a counter trend move, this is where I really think the best information comes in, would be down at the 3708 area. 3708 is the center of a new profile that formed below price. That's typically a bullish message. It would most certainly be a bullish message if price holds the 3708 to 3716 area. If it doesn't, then it suggests to move back to 3688. So we know we've got a violated, a negated TD9 count on the 10-minute chart. We know the prices tight on the 15-minute chart is testing a key level of support, 37.26.25. So we take this one step at a time. Again, if price closes below 37.26, that says that we had lower. Most likely, uh, that lower area would be that 37.08 to 37.16 level. I can't guarantee that price stops there, but that would be the price area to be watching. On a 240-minute time frame chart, now, this bar will not close till 2 p.m., so it's too early to call a TD9 count uh, pattern out here because by 2 p.m., if price is trading below 37.13.75, the pattern will go away. Now, in each case out here, and I just left it for the five-hour time frame chart, there is an A to B equals CD pattern that is in place out here. And that would take price or should have taken price or should take price to the 38.11.50-ish type area out there. We're looking at the five-hour time frame chart. That still may come to fruition, still may come to fruition out here. No key levels of, of support have really been broken. Yeah, if we look at a 10-minute and a 15-minute chart, uh, yeah, certainly those key levels have failed. That takes us over to these other time frames. So right now we're getting that push lower, pretty decent push lower out there. So I don't know what's driving that. Really, the patterns that were already out here on the intraday charts with regard to the Rosemont indicator signals, the TD9 count top that we took a look at in the two-hour time frame. So we're going to see if this 3708.40 area, uh, 3708.50, really is a, a key level of uh, support. And if it's not and price gets below that, again, we're looking at 3688 out there. So that's a pretty decent review. I think it's a decent review of the ES Mini. Now, let's do this here. A real decent review would say, well, what's going on in the internals out there? So let's take a look at those internals. Let's dive under the covers. And to do that, we take a look at our TAS market breadth meters here. This is for the NQ. Let's switch over and take a look at the S&P. Let's look at the ES Mini. And we can see we've got a, a bearish crossover waiting for the data to calculate in the upper left. There we go. So on a 30-minute basis out here, we only have 124 of the S&P 508, or how many of our instruments it is that are in it now, trading above the top of their profile, which would be a bullish signal, bullish message, and trading below the profile would be a bearish message. Now, this is generally speaking, but right now you got 276 instruments trading below, so that uh, suggests on the 30-minute basis you'd go back to the next level of support. Well, remember we talked about how we're already below support here, meaning profile support, Open store for 36.48. We're not there just yet. But what we really want to take a look at is what's going on on the larger time frames. And here we take a look at the ES Mini. Let's see if we can get that up on our screen here before we go to break. What we've got here is bullish crossovers to the 60, 240, and daily. This is just a counter trend move lower. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So before we went to that break out there, I said, hey, this looks like this is just a, a counter trend move to the downside out there. Now, that that conclusion is based upon the uh, market breadth for the 60-minute time frame out here. That's what we're looking at right now. And if you look over at the left-hand side in the center, it tells you how many instruments, as we speak, at 11.18 in the morning are trading above the top of the profile. Again, that is a, generally speaking, that is a bullish message. Well, that's 323 instruments. Below the bottom of its profile are 34 and generally speaking, that would be a bearish message. So you can see overwhelmingly there's positive market breadth that suggests that this move lower is nothing more than just a counter trend move. Now, that's in the hourly chart. If we look at the next time frame to the upside, that would be four hours. On a four-hour basis, 284 above, 50 instruments below. Again, very bullish there. And now let's take a look at the daily chart out here. The daily time frame has got 189 above. 40 below. This is just a counter trend move to the downside inside the ES mini. If it's not, then it would really be because of the weekly time frame chart, which has a lot of damage. Let's go check on that damage. There's 61 instruments trading above profile and, 200, and 152 below the bottom. So that's where the weakness is inside the market. But those other time frames suggest that the move lower, and let's just take a look at this also for the NQ, and then we'll go switch back to the uh, charts out there for the ES Mini. If we take a look at the market breadth, same thing, same thing. You've got on a, uh, I won't worry about expanding it out. You've got 88 instruments of the 100 or 106. So how many ever are in the NASDAQ 100 these days? 88 trade above the top of profile, only four below. Only four below. This is absolutely, the, at least from a market breadth standpoint, this is absolutely just a counter trend move to the downside on the four hour time frame for the NQ. 76 above, five below. Very bullish from a market breadth standpoint. Daily time frame, 46 above. Five below. Yeah, 50 are trading with inside profile out there. Again, still a bullish message out here uh, with regard to the uh, TAS market uh, profiles and its market breadth out there. So now back to the ES Mini. And so now on the ES Mini, we're trying to figure out, well, where is support? Well, right now, the TD9 count on the two-hour time frame is the area to be watching and observing. And that's between this uh, 3708, again, 3708 and 3716. Now, ideally, what we would see out here 
is we see some type of bottoming pattern. Well, it's not coming from the 10-minute uh, time frame chart out here, but you are in bar number eight on a 15-minute time frame. Uh, so that says that we should be watching this between 11.30 and 12 o'clock, so before we get off the air. And what we'd like to see there, uh, you know, first it's got to form that TD9 count bottom. Seems likely, like a likely outcome at this moment. Um, so we want to watch that. And then we would be watching a 10-minute chart, or even a 5-minute chart, I suppose, to look to see if there's any kind of bottom signals there or any kind of rally that is uh, going on. So we don't have, we know the price area to look. Right now, we can see price pulling back into that uh, bullish structure, the center of that bullish structure, two-hour time frame. I'll just simply expand out this chart here. In fact, what we'll do is we'll go look at all the 120-minute time frames. I don't know if each of them are showing the same TD9 count pattern. Well, there's one way to find out. So let's go find out, Stevie. Get to it already, would you? All right. So now that I beat myself up, let's go take a look at the 120-minute time frame charts out there. Yeah, that was me beating myself up. Boy, don't I just beat myself up poorly? So here on the four two-hour time frame charts, we'll just find out momentarily whether or not we've got TD9 counts amongst all. So you can see it in the Dow. You got it in the Russell. We know we have it in the ES, and you've got it inside the NQ. Now this makes it a little bit easier. So especially the ES and the NQ, where we have that market breadth information. So in the case of the NQ, its level of support should be between 11.10350. That's the TD9 count breakout area. And 11.115, that happens to be the bottom of its, uh, make sure that's the bottom, yeah, the bottom of its, uh, yeah, that's both the bottom and the center of its two-hour time frame profile. So this is coming into a strong support level here, or should be a strong support level. And again, that's in that 11.103-ish area. You can see the ES Mini, we've already talked about that ad nauseum. You've got a similar type of a pattern for the Dow. What I mean by that is there was a bullish structured profile, a bear structured profile that had formed below price. That is a bullish message. Now, that says that a counter trend move should stop Anywhere between 30, 363 and uh, 3421. 3363 and 3421. In the case of the Russell 2000, its TD9 count top should find support at the top of its current profile, and that's at 1751. So we'll certainly come back to these, uh, everything pointing to a counter trend move to the downside. And now it's really going to be about watching some of those intraday charts to uh, see if we get, especially so if we're trading in towards those support areas, whether we get any kind of turns on an intraday level. So let's do this here. Let's switch gears uh, because it sounds to me like we're going to focus a bit of our time here just to help everybody inside the Tigers. And of course, I'll field all questions. And let's go to our first question that came in. This is from Dennis inside the Tigers Den. Dennis wants to take a look at two different instruments and he's just looking for a outlook. What's the outlook for Occidental Petroleum? OXY is the ticker symbol there. So let's let uh, this get uh, populated on our screen out here. OXY, and then we'll help Dennis figure out what this is communicating to you and I. So when we look at the uh, at Occidental Petroleum, right now today's pullback retracement is uh, testing its green oscillator unchanged line. That's that green, red, squiggly line. The current oscillator unchanged line for the daily time frame is 66.10. Today's low, 66.14. As long as price remains above 66.10, uh, this could be the uh, uh, could be the next level where Occidental Petroleum tries to take off from here. What we also know, Dennis, is that price is consolidating. It's quite a large range out there. It's between the bottom of its profile, 61.57, and top. 7088. Now, those are the daily profiles that we looked at out here. If price were to close below that oscillator and change line, not tick below it or trade below it, but close below it, then that could take us back to our recent lows or back to the 6157 level. The weekly time frame chart shows a clear consolidation with inside its profiles as well. That range being between 5378 and 7179. On a monthly time frame, you do have a TD9 count top. That only gets negated with a close above, uh, oops, a close above 7404. Price also consolidating with inside its profile out here. Um, so what else? Uh, Occidental Petroleum. So we know that uh, Lightspeed Crew was getting hit. So too Occidental Petroleum out there. So we probably, Dennis, have to, in order to get a decent feel for Occidental, what it may do because of its correlation to the direction of uh, Lightspeed Crew, just get a good feel uh, what's going on there in intraday. Now, I've got a 30-minute time frame chart out here for Occidental Petroleum. You'll see that this will form bar number 9 at 1130. That's less than five minutes from now. Of course, that pattern could or should complete on the bar following bar number 9. So that would be at uh, 12, 12 p.m. You could get Occidental Petroleum on a 30-minute basis to form a bottom. So watch that, Dennis, because if 
price continues to move lower, in other words, the TD9 count doesn't bottom at all out there, that tells you about a strong momentum move in Occidental Petroleum to the downside. And then they'll go back to the daily time frame and how that would translate as I would say a further retracement, potentially with that 62 area, even 61.57 being the price target. So I hope that helped you out. Uh, and if we get a chance, we'll certainly take a look at uh, Lights Weed Crude just to see what's going on there. But let's switch over to your next instrument, which is BSM. So let's get that to populate the screen. BSM is, um, what is that? Blackstone Minerals. Blackstone, Blackstone Minerals trading out at 1695 <coughs> If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, jumping around just a little bit here. We'll go back to BSM, uh, Blackstone uh, Minerals uh, momentarily. But I do have those uh, charts for lights we crewed up on our screen out here. And we were noticing a 30-minute um td9 count pattern i believe it was td9 count we were looking at an oxygen petroleum so looking at the 30 minute time frame chart here for lights we crude so that was a bottom signal potential bottom signal for me and here in the case lights we crude you've got it confirmed by the d point pattern here's a 30 minute chart you see the blue line is a to b you might ask why did i draw the line we know that where the top is at the high that's pretty easy but why did i select this point out here which is 8 30 in the morning from October 17th. Why did I select that versus, let's say, this swing point right here at 1.30 in the afternoon on October 14th? Why did I select this? And the answer is, the reason I did, especially now with having this data, is because 
there was a higher high that formed out here, uh, this higher high at 10 o'clock in the morning on October 17th. It would be wrong to choose this point out here, this is where it's got labeled C or D, okay, those are Chapman wave counts out there, and then choose that high knowing that there was a lower low that occurred after that point that you might have considered using. So that's the reason why. So now early on in the, uh, as uh, so let's just say here, this was the information that you had, you were drawing A to B equals CD patterns out here. Here then you would have selected that uh, label uh, where it's got D, the 1.30 uh, in the uh, afternoon on October 14th. And uh, but you change, you know, the A to B equals CD pattern can change as you get more information. So don't be worried about changing. Don't be get don't get married to an A to B equals CD pattern you draw in. You've drawn in, especially as new information gets revealed to you. Now, here's the cool thing, Dennis. If price lights we crude that is closes below the low of this hammer candle, the low of that hammer candle is 81.33. We have an expression, or I like an expression I like to use that if you're if you uh, close below the bottom of a hammer candle, if you're long, you're wrong out there. And what that means to you uh, with regard to Occidental Petroleum is that should continue to head lower because you will not have had a bottom uh, for lights recruit. So that's how I put those two together. I do hope that that helps you out. And if not, well, my apology for blabbering, but uh, blabbering it is. Now, back to a BSM out there. That is Blackstone Minerals. And what we're looking for here is just an outlook. Well, the outlook on a daily time frame, Dennis, was a TD9 count top that formed on October the 10th. What that's basically led to is a sideways move. Price is below its green oscillator and change line and below the center of its bearish structure daily profile. That could lead to a move down to 1576 or even 1549. But right now, price has found support for whatever the reason is. I don't know if it's an intraday signal or what have you, but it did find support at the lows from October 11th. And so 1651 is going to be a key area for you to watch and observe. On a weekly time frame chart, we have a Rhodes Momentum indicator pattern that is still in play. That's the one that formed back in June. So price got back up and tested and rejected that area. Price is above on a weekly basis, though, Dennis, above its green oscillator and change line on top of its profile. Its signal is neutral. Signal on the daily, not so neutral, suggests lower price. And on a monthly time frame chart out here, why didn't that populate? That's a good question. There we go. So now as we take a look at it, price is taking on, there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. That goes like this. So let's go take, we'll just draw on the A to B and then we'll move that over to the to the uh, C point out there. So it's approximately like that. Move this over here. Yeah, so that is not completed. And that should complete at about its TD9 count breakdown level on a monthly basis. And that's at 1877. So price above the top of its daily profile, or week monthly profile that is, uh, that is at the uh, price point of 1659. So you're neutral on the weekly. You're bullish on the monthly. And you're mm, somewhat bearish uh, on the uh, daily time frame out there. A quick peek at the 30-minute chart out here from Blackstone Minerals shows us what? It shows a nice TD9 count bottom. Looks like that formed uh, towards the uh, close yesterday. That, no, that was at 11 o'clock in the morning yesterday. But all that that has led to, Dennis, is just a little consolidation with inside its daily profile. So it's not exactly the strongest of TD9 count um, uh, results. You know, after it did form a bottom, we did get that uh, bounce out there. So the pattern most certainly worked. But not seeing a ton of uh, positive information here to suggest that this is going to uh, rally. So it does look like lower price out there. I do hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for your request. Let me see if we've got anything else that is in the queue. I don't believe we do. Uh, but Oh, I take that back. We do have two questions out here. The first one coming in from uh, Lee. Lee. <laughs> Sorry about that. The first one coming in from Brent. Of course, Brent will understand why I, I said that. Uh, I will come in from a Brent uh, from a Martinez, California. He says, good morning and terrific Tuesday, Steve. Back at you, my friend. Uh, could you please take a look at the uh, shorter term charts for the SMH? I'm using SOXL sold at the open this morning, looking for potential re-entry if the charts are in agreement. Thanks much. Have a great day. So absolutely, we can do that now for the intraday charts here for the SMHs. Um, what I'm going to do is put up this set of screens. I'm hoping that it doesn't take too, too long to uh, populate. While this is populating, though, talk about inflation. I had to take my uh, Range Rover in for service last night, which I did. It was around 4 o'clock when I went out there. So it's about an hour. The Range Rover deal is about an hour from the house. And uh, so I was dropping it off, waiting for them to do the paperwork, and I was looking around inside the showroom. Who doesn't look around in the showroom? They had a new Defender out there, a 2023 Defender. 
It was a cool-looking defender as well out there. Had a unique paint job. What they were asking for is twenty-five thousand over, twenty-five grand over, the invoice, just because it was a uh, kind of a limited edition type vehicle. It's not a limited edition. It's just a limited quantity. So then I went over and took a look at an Evoque. So kind of their lower end um, uh, model out there. Still a great car out there, and um, and that was like thirty-five hundred over sticker. And it simply said it was because of a microchip shortage out there. Uh, just just crazy when you start taking a look at that. Okay, so back to this set of charts out here, SMHs. I, should, I, was, I was talking, wasn't paying attention to the screen. Sorry about that, Stevie. Don't do that again. So now, Brett, we're getting the SMH uh, charts out here. And then if you're in the local area, on the way back it was raining, and I didn't really have much in the way of dinner plans, so we stopped at uh, the Okeechobee Steakhouse, the oldest steakhouse in Florida. Well, at least that's what they say. 75 years old out there and great wine list and great value. They didn't mark up their wines that much. It was a beautiful thing. In any event out there, we're taking a look at the SMHs now. And Brent specifically asked about the intraday time period. So on a 15-minute basis out here, that's the shortest time period that I have, Brent, uh, for this uh, set of charts out there. No bottom signal out here. Price might be headed all the way back to the uh, gap to close this little gap here. That was from October the 17th, up at about the 179.48 level. The 30-minute chart shows that prices consolidate in between TD Nightcount breakout support. That's at 174.70, and uh, TD Nightcount breakdown resistance at the 183 mark. That 183 mark, that's where you sold at the open. That was a TD Nightcount breakdown resistance level. You certainly want to watch that. If price is able to close above that, that would certainly be signaling something to you. So 174.70 uh, is a likely price target. Uh, that's coming from the 30-minute time frame for the uh, semis out there. On an hourly basis, I don't see a whole lot more. 173.81 is a potential level of support. On a 130-minute time frame out here, uh, what we have is uh, a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm. So we don't have that. You've got a TD nine count pattern on the 195. So now we're getting to the bottoms. The daily's got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. The 195-minute uh, chart has a TD nine count bottom out there. And price right now is just consolidating with inside that profile. So this is suggesting, Brent, to you and I, that between where price is trading right now and 173.40, that has the potential to be the support area. I would say, and I say use that word lightly, potential, because no bottoming pattern is present inside the 15 or the 30-minute chart, although trading back to 174.70 could be a bottom signal. The reason why I say in this case here could be is because price had already broken through that level for a period of about two hours back on the 16th and 17th out there. So, Brent, we come back from the uh, breakout here. I'll see if there's anything else to uh, point to. Probably that daily time frame chart with price being below a red OUL. You could get 170.74 out of this move. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Data White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the uh, a bit of a mixed bag out here now. You got the Dow up 126, S&P up 10, Nasdaq 100 off 17. Russell is up uh, eight points out there. Let's just check in. What the heck happened there? Oh, I see. Give me a no. Give me a no. Give me a no. Sorry about that. Uh, let's just check in. I'm just checking in uh, off screen here. You still got positive market breath for the 60 minute time frame for the ES mini. 323 above, 334 below. I still say this is just a counter trend move lower inside the NASDAQ 100, which just went uh, negative. It's off 17 points. Again, still bullish daily, 240, 60 on the 60 minute time frame, 62 above, 16 below. So again, still looking like nothing more than just a counter trend move uh, so far. Um, when we take a look at, we'll use the uh, market breadth gauge out there. Let's uh, go to our next request. This is for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, G-Man is taking a look at uh, an entry into Apple. So as we look at Apple, here's what we know. Here's what we know on a monthly time frame. Um, we don't really have a uh, bottom, so to speak, uh, but price is held. Right now it's trading back above the uh, bottom of its uh, profile out there. So that's a slightly bullish thing as long as price remains above 140.48. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, we do not have a bottom signal out here uh, at all. And, uh, oh, Apple just jumping around, or my screen is jumping around quite a bit. Uh, so on a daily time frame, so on a weekly time frame, no bottom signal. Price below that red oscillator and change line, always dangerous out here. The daily time frame does show that Apple wants to rally. It certainly was signaling that uh, earlier today. And you've got that nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It took place four days ago, that nice bullish engulfing candle. And earlier in the day, we were above the top of its profile. That's what you want to watch at today's close. And that's uh, up at the 143.59. You close above 143.59, it is suggesting a further rally. The 195-minute chart, uh, what I would draw in here would be an A to B equals CD to the upside. That's assuming that price closes above on 195-minute basis, 144.52. Again, you're looking for an entry price to go long, I believe is what you were um, looking at out here. And the problem is, the issue is, so where would be a price point to do that? Right now, we look at the 130-minute time frame chart. This still is looking more bullish than it is bearish out there. Um, the 65-minute time frame chart did find resistance at its TD9 count breakdown area. That's at 116.54. So if price could pull back to its oscillator and change line right around 142.30, or 140.91, that would be an area that you would consider taking a long position. I know you're using call options for this trade out there. That's the 65 minute chart. You've got a TD9 count top on the 30 minute time frame chart. And as long as price stays below that oscillator and change line, price may be targeting at the bottom of that profile. 142.57 would be another area to look at. 142.57, we had about 142.20 or so on the 65 minute time frame chart. So that's the range that I would be looking at. And the 15 minute time frame chart is suggesting there would be support between either at 142.57 and if price were to close below that, then you'd be looking at 141.19. So on a further pullback, should we get it out there, 
those would be the areas that you'd be watching or observing. Likewise, on a 30 minute time frame out there, if price were to close above its TD9 count top, so let me make sure you've got that number too. That number is 146.70. If price closes above that, then the A to B equals CD would be back in uh, play out there. And that A to B equals CD, whoops, would look like this. Sorry about that. Here's, I'm just going to draw the A to B line in. Big straight line move up there. And then we're just going to move that over to the C point, or what is the C point as we speak right now. And what we can see here is that one-to-one -one short term, because A to B equals CD on the 30-minute chart, could or should take you up to the 148-ish area out there. That's only if price is able to close above that TD9 count top. So I hope that helps you out. Um, that I believe that was uh, G-Man that was looking for uh, looking for that information. So I do hope that helps you out. We've also got a request here from, two requests really from Mimi. And um, Mimi was asking about, she said, hey, they're releasing 10 million or so barrels of oil today. What's that going to, how's that going to impact light speed crude? And the answer to that, we were really taking a look at that when we looked at light speed crude earlier. Uh, so I'll just throw one more figure out to you. We're going to change screens here, go to the black background screen. So I'm hoping that you wrote down the uh, levels that we're looking at. Remember on a 30-minute basis, we had a buy the D point, which was formed by a hammer candle. I gave you the price at a price close below. That suggests lower prices coming at us. So if we do get that negated by the D point, maybe on a 30-minute uh, time frame, you're asking what does it mean out there? I, I don't know if price is moving lower because of that release or not. I just look at the charts out here. And in this case here, the charts show light sweet crew which is the bottom left price is trading below the bottom of its uh, daily profile out there so its next level of support would be uh, 79.67 79.67 is likely where light sweet crude would head to if price closes below that bullish 30 minute hammer candle out there so hope that helps you out with that one uh, you also had a second request which is take a look at ticker symbol erf so that's what we have up on our screen right now. ERF is what? I don't know, but let's go find out. I can find out on my other set of screens out here real easy. That's Enter Plus Corporation. Enter Plus Corporation right now is trading at about 15.33. And uh, what do we see out here? Well, the first thing that pops out at me, Mimi, is that price right now is trading below its green oscillator and change line, 15.51. A green oscillator and change line tells us that the price oscillator is above zero, and when price is above the green line, we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. When price falls below a green oscillator and change line, we have a price oscillator above zero, but one that is falling. So those aren't really uh, bearish conditions, but they do suggest that you could see a further retracement. Well, in the case of ERF, that further retracement could take you back to the gap that gap that formed out here on September 30th, and that high out there would be 1446. Or if price were to get below that, 1416 on a daily time frame is what you would be looking at. The weekly time frame chart out here um, shows a Rhodesman Dominicator top that took price back to support, the bottom of the weekly profile, where it then bottomed, moved higher. Price is above the top of its profile, but below its green oscillator and change line. I'm going to go with more of a neutral signal, maybe on the weekly time frame chart. And on the daily chart out here, we have a uh, TD9 count top that remains in effect unless price is able to close above 115, 115, 1550, not 115, but 1550 out there. We're trading right now at 1534. It's a monthly time frame, so it'll be the end of the month that you'll be looking at. So the last chart for us to look at, Mimi, is the 30-minute uh, time frame out there. Remember, the daily is kind of neutral to suggest is what, that that wants to see a further retracement. Well, turns out, that if price closes below 1537, that's a TD nine count breakout level. That's in essence being tested as we speak. You've got 11 more minutes left in this session. If price closes near 1534, if price closes below 1537, that suggests lower price. Of course, that takes us to this gap out here, or maybe it turns into an A to B equals CD to the downside. So we're not there just yet, um, and a price would need to close below uh, 1506 in order to generate that A to B equals CD pattern out there. So overall, with regard to ERF, it does suggest that we should see a further retracement out there. And uh, then I'd be just looking for a 30-minute pattern if you're looking to get into this position, Mimi. So I hope that helps you out both with regard to Lights We Crude as well as uh, Enter Plus Corporation. Ticker symbol there is ERF. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow trading up 195 points. The S&P up 21. NASDAQ now positive up 26. Russell up by 12. We'll go finish out the show, take a look at those intraday charts for the NQ and the ES. 
or whatever we can squeeze in there. Remember, we're saying that the TAS market press suggests that the move lower is a counter trend move. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. <laughs> Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Uh, Joey D inside the Tigers. Then let's take a look at Slumber's A. Ticker symbol there is SLB. So what you can see out here, uh, Joey, is if you look at the weekly chart, the center chart, you'll see the completed one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. I say completed, but it was never confirmed. So if we look at the daily time frame, it was never confirmed with a bearish reversal candle. So this is suggesting to me that what we want, what this is likely to do is more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, on a daily time frame, price is back below the bot of the top of its daily profile. So you want to watch 43.12. As long as price remains below that, it may just be pulling back to test support. There are a couple of support levels. The first one being the green oscillator and change line. 41.97. Below that would be its bullish structured profile. And so that would say the support area would be between the range of 40.47 to 41.36 out there. Um, so otherwise, it looks good. The uh, monthly chart price is just consolidating with inside its monthly profile. You're above the weekly profiles out here. So it looks like just a retracement back to a, a level of support. Now, what the 30 minute time frame chart shows us is um, really not much other than a consolidation sideways out there. Here are 41.78. Should be a key area of support inside of Slumberjays, 4178, not that far from that uh, daily green oscillator and change line. So that should be the support area 
Forest Lumberjay. Again, let's just go back. We started the show, take a look at the ES Mini and the NQ. We took a look at Taz Market Breath for multiple time frames. We see it that was overwhelmingly bullish. That was the reason why Stevie said, look, this move lower is just a counter trend move to the downside. So as we come back to these 10 minute or the, the charts out here, you'll see a 15 minute chart has a TD nine count bottom. At a minimum, price should at least rally to 11,235 level. No bottoming pattern on the uh, 30 minute time frame uh, chart. Do we have to wait for that? Not necessarily. If we look at the Rhodes Mintum indicator top on the 60 minute, price pulled back to its breakout level of support of 11,10350. So I'd be watching 11,10350 today if price closed below that. That suggests lower price, but at this stage here, that counter trend move lower looks to me to be over. You came back on a TD9 count from the two-hour time frame chart right back to that level of support, that breakout area. The 240-minute time frame chart, which does not have a topping signal just yet, came back and tested its green oscillator and changed at 11.095. That's a bullish signal out there. So, folks, stay tuned. That helps you out with regard to your trading day. Stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up, and I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Take care.